Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So today I want to talk about machinery gibs and how to measure and how to adjust them. We're going to be using the K&T for our test subject today. The K&T is, is a perfect example to go to and practice on and show you some video and put some indicators on there to show you what we're going to be talking about right here. And it's a, it's a pretty important subject. I'll say right off, I'm not an expert on the subject. I haven't done a whole lot of machinery adjustments, but I've done enough to be familiar with it and know what you're supposed to do. It's something that we also discussed in the, in the Richard King scraping class. We took a day where we had went out to the museum where Keith's machines are, and we did some adjustments out there, you know, and Richard showed us how to set an indicator on them and to move them to see what kind of movement that you're getting in the gibbs, you know, and then adjust the gibbs accordingly. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, this particular video, I'm not going to be directly going in there and making adjustments to the machine yet. I'm going to be showing you how you can check them and where to look for the gibbs. And, and I'm also going to be referencing this book right here that I have for the K&T. This is the maintenance manual. And there's one small section in there that tells you how to adjust the gibbs on there. So I'm going to bring the other camera over here. We're going to zoom in on that so that you can see that and you can read it and you can see exactly what Kearney and Trekker had in their manual on how to adjust those gibbs. And then after that I'm going to go over there and we're going to use the indicator. We're going to set the indicator up. I'm going to show you how to how to get some readings on that to tell you whether or not you need to adjust your gibbs. And Recently, I had a request from Jason over at Fireball Tool. He had, he had sent me an email and said that he had, he had got one of those big facing mills from Kevin Alexander, and he had a question about how to adjust the tables correctly in order to get it trimmed in with the, with the horizontal spindle, which will be the spindle behind this vertical head here. I believe what Jason is doing is mounting a big face mill directly into the horizontal spindle here. And he's probably going to be mounting his tools that he's cutting up here on the table and cutting across the back face of it like that. So I'm hoping that what I'm showing here will help Jason and help everybody else with these machines, uh, help get them trammed in a little bit, not trammed in, but adjusted so that they're, they're a close tolerance machine. So let's go ahead and check out the book and see what it says. All right, so in our Kearney and Trekker manual right here, this is the, this one small area that tells you about gib adjustments on the machine. But this right here can be applied to most all of your milling machines. They're all built very similar. The only difference is the gib is going to be in a different location, maybe on some machines. But I think they're all pretty much uh, built sort of similar to each other. So let's see what it says. The knee gib is located on the left column knee way, small end down, and that's for the knee. We're going to be checking the knee, saddle, and table. Now, my machine doesn't have a vertical head. That, that would be something like uh, James Kilroy's big 415. He, could, he can adjust the, uh, the vertical head. So we're going to start with the knee, though, because that's the big one on my machine. You're going to be kind of surprised what you see. So it's located on the left column knee. We're going to check the saddle located along the left uh, knee saddle way. Small end of the gib is at the rear. Uh, small end of the gib for the knee gib is at the bottom of the machine. That's another reason why we're going to be coming back to this. Is just the location of getting to that screw is a little difficult. And then again, the table. Uh, I'll show you where the table gib is at on this K&T. Now, look, look right here. Let's read this. Adjustment is made in the following manner. Loosen the screw at the small end of the gib a quarter turn and tighten the screw at the opposite end one eighth of a turn. Tighten the screw at the small end of the gib until it is just snug. Repeat this procedure until a slight increase in drag is felt when hand cranking the sliding member. Caution! Do not over tighten the gibs. Over adjustment will cause excessive wear shortening the life of the gib. So nowhere in this paragraph or anywhere in the book does it call out specific readings for an indicator. If you're going to stick an indicator on the machine and try to make adjustments like that. What you would use the indicators for is to help you get it 
close within reason. You do just like they said. You want to feel it. So after you adjust it, you crank it and you feel the friction on the gib and you don't want it too tight. And you can stick an indicator on there. And I would I would say that if you can see maybe one to two thousandths play in the indicator, you're you're within the ballpark. You should be really close. Alright. So with all that in consideration, let's go over to the K and T and and take a look at it. So the first place we're gonna start at is your your knee gib. So this would be your your gibs for your knee to raise and lower on. I've already loosened up the the wiper that I've got to move off by the way and uh, cleaned it off there. So that's the center one right here. I'll go ahead and pull it off and show you. Now I want to point this out just because we're here talking about the mill. That is one very nice looking wiper, very well made and engineered for a machine. It looks like it's vulcanized. It's got the metal plate molded onto it right there. And it's got the nice angled edge that pressures up against your, your machinery way like that. Once you bolt it down, it kind of puts just a slight bit of pressure on it and really wipes away all of your, your chips. That's what it's for is to wipe away the crud. Those are, those are very well made machine wipers. So K&T did a good job with that. And that's how all the wipers are on this mill over here on the uh, on the saddle travel as well it's the same way all right so on your knee you have a gib the, this hole this big hole right in there that's where your adjustment screw is for your for your gib and on this machine the gib is going to be putting pressure against the inside of this way right here your the left side so you've got a screw on the bottom of the knee. It's all the way at the bottom. It's gonna be a little tricky to get to. You're gonna to have to have a short screwdriver to adjust it. And then this one up here. So to adjust this, according to the book, what you're gonna do, the large ends on this side, the small ends down there. So you loosen the bottom, let's say a quarter inch, I mean, I'm sorry, a quarter turn, and then you adjust this one about an eighth of a turn. And you do that until you get the right feel. You would move the, the knee up and down until you get the right feel on that. But for reference, what we're going to do, I'm going to go ahead and set an indicator up right here. I'm going to show you how you can check it to see if you've got excessive slop in your gib and if you need to make adjustments on, on there. So we're going to set an indicator up. And for this, I'm going to use this big boy Starrett that I got from James Green. And I got this indicator four jobs like this to try to use on video to try to help see the indicator movement a little bit better. It's a nice big dial and it's got a lot of movement there. So what we want to do is set an indicator base here on your on your saddle and we're going to put the indicator right here on the side of this way. Now you're just getting a reference reading so it's not really telling you what kind of play you've got in that. You're using this as a reference. But you want to try to keep it as close to the top of the machine, the the part of the machine that you're that you're measuring. So you know if you put it way up here, you're going to be multiplying your reading because you're rotating on an axis is what you're doing. So let's put it just right about in this area right here, and I'm going to try to get it adjusted so that you guys can see it better. And Fine adjust bottom on the Noga. I love these things. You can take and just dial that thing nice and elegantly. Now before I do any, before I show this thing moving, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing over here on the table to make this move. So to read the indicator, I'm going to just come over here to the table and I'm going to grab onto it and I'm going to pick up on it. And I'm going to push down on it. Pick up and push down. And that's what we're going to do to read the gib play for the knee. So on these Kearney and Trekkers, you have two knee locks. This is one right here. And then you have one on the other side. And I found when using this mill, when I'm making cuts, it's really important that I keep this thing locked. So I've got them unlocked right now and that'll show us some movement on the indicator right here.
All right, so I got you set up. Hopefully you can see that pretty good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna push and pull up and down on this table and we're gonna see if this uh, saddle is rocking this way on the, on the ways. Look at that. Now I'm pushing down right there and I'm letting off. So we've got five, six, seven. That's half thousandths lines, by the way. So that's seven thousandths. I'm going to, I'm going to pick up on the table. So that's about our zero right there. If I pull really hard, you get a few tents. So we're just going to let it settle there. So I'm going to push down again. And let off. I'm pushing. See that needle moving? So five, six. So I'm going to call it seven thousandths play that we have right there. But then again, I'm, I'm remember that this is not reflecting how much play is in that give there. This is a reference on movement. So you can use this to adjust the give and try to get it close. So I'd, I'd like to see that within one or two thousandths after you make adjustments on it. All right, so I can sit here and now and just, I'm not really applying a lot of pressure, just watching it move. All right, so I'm gonna reach down here, I'm gonna lock, lock the knee. Now let's see what it does. Maybe a maybe a half a thousandths, and that's me putting a lot of weight on it. No, if I went around there and locked the other side, it would probably reduce that even more. All right, so there's how you can check the knee gib to see how much play you got in your gib right there. So your next adjustment that you want to check is going to be for your saddle, your saddle gib. And I've got to go down here and take all the wipers off to get to the screws. And I haven't done that yet. I know where I know about where it's at, but I haven't done it yet. But I just want to go ahead and show you how we're checking that to see if we need to make some adjustment on that. So I've got some parts down there that I've got to take off to remove the wipers. But we're gonna we're gonna do this kind of like I showed you how how we just did the knee and we're going to be pulling and pushing on the table to get the table to try to twist like this here where you would be getting in there trying to adjust your gib to reduce that I think that this one right here the your your saddle is also very important like if you're up here trying to use that face mill in this horizontal spindle you're making a cut across here if your saddle's off and it's trying to move a little bit then you're going to get a little bit of air in your cuts because the table's going to be trying to move on you so let's go around there and look at the indicator and see what kind of reading i'm getting on it so to check our our saddle gib for play we're going to set the indicator up and i'm going to come over to the table i'm going to go side to side with it this time instead of up and down so I'll take and I'll pull it like so, and I'll push it like so. Pull and push, and that should show us our, our movement this way, back and forth. All right, we got the Noga set up with the big steer it. Do our fine adjust to zero it out right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull it to the back. All right, so right there we got five and a half thou. I'm gonna push it the other way. Okay, so I had it set on zero right there. All right, there we got six. That was me really pulling on it. So without putting a lot of pressure on it, just really lightly just pull and push, and I can pretty much just make it move like that. Just I'm wiggling the table back and forth. So I would say that just like the knee, this gib does need to be adjusted. And again, remember, that's not telling you how much play you have in the gib. You can take this indicator and move it further out here, and the further you go, the more you're going to read on the indicator. The further in you go, the less you're going to read. So it's used as a reference only. Remember that. I'm going to go ahead and tighten up both of the, the saddle locks. We got one on each side of the machine here. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that one. All right, and I got the other one real tight.
So if you're making a cut across here with that horizontal setup, you know, that face mill, you want to make sure those are both locked. Now let's go ahead and give it a try. That's me really pulling and pushing. Go ahead and zero that. It's pushing and pulling. So I'm getting less than a half thou. So just remember that, you know, you make your cuts, go it, make sure that your saddle is locked just like your knee. Your, knee, your knee's locked, your saddle's locked. So our last gib that we need to check is our, is our table saddle for your uh, table travel, you know, your x-axis right here. That's what I call the x-axis anyway. And that's going to be underneath the table, just under here. I'll get the camera and the flashlight and show you where this one's at because you can see the screws on either side down there. And what I'm going to do is, is move the indicator so that it's mounted onto the saddle and we're going to put the indicator on the table and do the same thing. We're going to pull it side to side to see what kind of movement we might be getting in the table there. Now, one thing that I was going to mention is, let me see if I can get you right here. On the, uh, the, the table lock is this one right here. You can tighten that one up just like you would on, the, on a Bridgeport type machine. You know, you got a, a lock here and a lock here. If you're making a cut across and you know you got a little bit of a little bit of wear in the machine, it, it's got some play, it's moving around. One of the tricks that I do all the time uh, whenever I'm cutting keyways, doing any kind of milling, is that it, as it's feeding, I come up and I don't lock it, but I put some pressure on the lock to give it some drag and give it enough friction there so that it's not bouncing back and forth, you know, across that, that play in your gib. So remember that, you can give it just a little bit as you're cutting there and it'll help keep that bounce out of the machine. All right, so we got you underneath the, the table of the K&T and that flat headed screw right there that I got the flashlight beamed on, that's gonna be your adjustment for your gib. That's the end of the gib that you're looking at right there. So you would, that's, the, that's the large end, you would screw the gib in that way. I'll go, I'll go to the other side and show you the other screw. All right, so there, there's the small end of the gib. You can see it's a lot narrower on that end. So that's the screw that you would back out. And then on the other side, you would tighten it in about an eighth of a turn. All right, so I'm gonna try to set it up a little differently this time. I'm gonna mount it on the, on the saddle. So I'm not, I'm, not on the, uh, I'm not on the machine knee right here since the table is mounted to the saddle. This big indicator is a little bit awkward to try to get set up, but hopefully you can see it a little bit better. So let's go about even with the, with the way right here. and try to get it where you guys can see it a little bit better. Try to get it so that you're not seeing the glares and the light. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. We're gonna pull it. <clears throat> I'm not getting anything there. I still got it locked, so let me loosen that up. <clears throat> Nothing, I'm not seeing anything. I think that table gib is pretty well adjusted. So we're mounted, we're mounted on the saddle and the table is sitting on, on the saddle. So that should be giving me some reading if the, if the gib needs some adjustment right there. I'm not seeing anything, but that's one way you can adjust that right there or measure it to see if you, if you need to do some adjustment on that gib. Just to kind of compare reading, I went ahead and put the mag base back on the knee here, and we've got it up here on the table. I've got the saddle locked. We've already kind of shown this, but I'm just showing it again. So I'm getting not quite a half dial, you know, a few tenths right there, and the, the table is not locked. So I believe that the give for our table movement is well within range of what it, what it should be. But we need to do some adjustments back here on the knee gib and the saddle gib. 
All right, guys. Well, that's going to be about it for this video. That's that's really the main thing that I wanted to show you is just using an indicator set up on the machine and move it around to see if you're getting some play in your Gibbs. And then from there, you know whether you need to go in there and do some fine adjusting on them. And I would like to go back and we'll do a, we'll, we'll do another video on, I'll get these wipers off out of the way, and we'll start doing some fine adjustments on it to try to get those Gibbs adjusted better than what they are and what they need to be. Again, I think the table, the table knee I think is good, but we definitely need to adjust the saddle. The Gibbs is going to be right up in here behind the wipers. And of course, the one on the back for the uh, for the knee. So, hopefully, that helped. You know, if you got a manual, check your machine manual. It may say something a little bit different than the, the one for Curry and Tricker right here. But this is the only one that I had reference to. So this is what we we're doing, and that's it. Hopefully, you enjoyed, and we'll see you again real soon.